afternoon, everybody. Uh, on behalf of uh, Center for Global and Strategic Studies and uh, the Embassy of Azerbaijan in Islamabad, I would like to welcome all the participants of uh, uh, today's conference. The topic of today's conference is the importance of leadership skills during uh, crisis management. And uh, today's conference is basically dedicated to uh, today's conference is basically dedicated to the 97th birth anniversary uh, of uh, His Excellency Hader Aliyev, the national leader of Azerbaijan. So before we formally open the conference, I would just like to uh, tell everybody about uh, a few uh, rules that first of all, we will have uh, the five designated speakers who will speak. And after that, we have a special uh, speaker from uh, uh, the, the head of the Kyrgyz State University in Bishkek. Uh, she will be joining us and she will speak. And after that, we'll have comments and question answer session. So this session will be for almost uh, 90 minutes. So now I will hand over uh, to Mr. Samir, who's the uh, deputy head of the mission uh, of Azerbaijan Embassy at Islamabad. Mr. Samir, you can please take off. Thank you very much, Harit Saab. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone, distinguished speakers and uh, dear participants. I welcome you all uh, to this webinar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Azerbaijan konağlarımızı da ayrıca salamlamaq istəyirəm. Xüsusən uh, də uh, Fuad Məllim, uh, Fərid Məllim, Əli Məllim. Təşəkkür edirəm bizə qoşulduğunuz üçün. Uh, as uh, Halid Saab, Mr. Halid Teymur uh, mentioned, uh, today's webinar is dedicated to the 97th uh, birth anniversary of Heydar Aliyev, the national leader of Azerbaijan. Uh, now I would like to request uh, General uh, Halid Amir Jafri, the president of CGSS, uh, for his opening remarks. Please, General Jaffrey. Once again, uh, welcome, a very warm welcome to all the participants, especially our brothers from uh, Azerbaijan, uh, His Excellency Ali Ali Zada, and then in Pakistan, Mr. Ahmad Yar Hiraj, uh, joined us in, in and of course, His Excellency Mr. Fuad Muradov. Dr. Niaz from the Punjab University, Dr. Farid Shafiyev, Chairman Center of Analysis International Relations. A special, this is a very apt, very relevant topic, I think, which has been chosen, uh, especially nowadays in the world of the uh, corona and where it has landed us. And the leadership all over the world is facing all sorts of problems in handling this issue. Leadership, uh, as you all know, is an art acquired through experience or it is in true leadership is probably the architect of a chosen desired future not as a reaction imposed by circumstances the coronavirus is testing the leadership qualities of all world leaders like never before all world leaders at one time or the other gentlemen have to face a crisis situation in their life woven into the way the fabric of life the, theoretically in modern time a leader's response to a crisis consists of some rules or commandments as they say an updated crisis handling strategy a competent crisis handling team regular simulations or exercises facing the crisis without any Denial, tell it all what are the expected results. Keep all stakeholders to be informed. And finally, refuse the temptation to blame and muddy the waters. Having said this, uh, we must remember that historically speaking, the leaders were born and very seldom trained. There is a whole list of world leaders who have faced serious crisis and who have emerged on top. In fact, all leaders have faced crisis during their careers, whether they are religious leaders, including prophets, military leaders, civilian leaders, and so on. In more recent times, 
قائد اعظم محمد علی جنا کمز ٹو مائنڈ لیڈرشپ تھرو کرائسس آر ویل نون ون سچ گریٹ لیڈر آف کورس از دا لیٹ مسٹر حیدر علی آف ازر بائی جان ہوز نائنٹی سیون برتھ اینیورسری از بینگ کمیمریٹڈ ہز بیلنسڈ لیڈرشپ اینڈ پالیسیز براڈ اسٹیبلٹی ٹو ازر بائی جان he struggled against corruption even during soviet days his policies led to increased economic social and cultural growth rate in 1993 during a serious crisis the people of azerbaijan demanded to bring haider aliyev to power that is the during his presidency He introduced many reforms in all spheres of government and administration and the foreign policy was rebuilt and transformed. He used the oil potential of Azerbaijan to avoid financial difficulties with great success. And he single-handedly launched Azerbaijan into the position into which it finds itself today. I had the privilege of uh, visiting Baku during his lifetime when he was president and saw the results myself. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we hope that we have a very successful uh, webinar and I will now hand you over to Colonel Khalid or Mr. Samir to carry on with the seminar. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to request uh, His Excellency Mr. Ali Arizada, Ambassador of Azerbaijan to Pakistan uh, for his speech uh, on the topic. Distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, Salam Alaikum and very good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the Embassy of the Republic of Azerbaijan, I would like also to welcome you in this uh, webinar. Thank you, Colonel Khali, for your forewords and uh, General Jaffrey for your remarks. Uh, I hope that we will have today very interesting discussions and webinar uh, because we have uh, wonderful uh, speakers from Azerbaijan, from uh, Pakistan, as well as uh, from different uh, countries who uh, joined to us today. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank our speakers uh, of this webinar, especially Actually, uh, Mr. Murado, Chairman of State Committee on Work of the Diaspora of the Republic of Azerbaijan, as well as Ambassador Shabi. I would like also to thank uh, Chairman Prime Minister Inspection Commission of Pakistan as well as Vice Chancellor of Punjab University. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and for your valuable time. We have here also our friends from uh, media from different circles of the society. I would like to thank all of them uh, and uh, all the guests who are attending uh, our webinar. Uh, the theme of the webinar is interesting, the importance of the leadership skills during crisis management. And uh, this webinar, as already mentioned, dedicated to the national, to the 97th first anniversary of the national leader of Azerbaijan, Haydar Aliyev. And on uh, 10th of May, we will mark his uh, first anniversary for, for your information. Uh, I am sharing, and the, why we dedicated uh, this seminar, first because of his birth anniversary, and the second because Haydar uh, Aliyev was in power uh, two times in Azerbaijan during the Soviet time, as well as during the independent time. He also was the member of Politburo in the leadership of the Soviet Union, so, uh, as an uh, outstanding personality, uh, he had very uh, uh, quality leadership skills and experience, uh, which 
we are going to share and also we are going uh, to see the effort and achievements of our uh, current leadership in this webinar. Uh, so if you will glance to the life of the uh, national leader of Haydar, uh, Aliyev, during his Soviet time, even when he came to power, his focus uh, was on uh, Azerbaijan, on strengthening of Azerbaijan, strengthening uh, and uh, increasing the economic growth of the country. And uh, not only the economic growth, uh, the uh, special attention by him was paid to the uh, national and spiritual values of Azerbaijan, to the traditions of Azerbaijan, because at that time, during the Soviet ideology, it was uh, very difficult uh, to manage all these things and to pay direct attention to the national and spiritual value, uh, which Peter Amir was uh, able to, to do a lot of effort for this purpose. And uh, as a member of Politburo, as well as the chairman, the deputy chairman of the USSR, Council of Ministers, when he was in the power, uh, he uh, did a lot for Azerbaijan, and his uh, even uh, in that difficult time when the Soviet Union was in the power during the bloody tragedy committed by the Soviet troops uh, in Baku in 1990, uh, he uh, made the courage statement and led the membership of Communist Party and uh, his statement was against the uh, bloody tragedy uh, uh, committed by the uh, Soviet leadership and Soviet troops in Baku. As you see, in, during the Soviet time, uh, even he uh, devoted his uh, life uh, to Azerbaijan, to Azerbaijan nation, and he, uh, he, his far-sighted policy uh, was focused for the independence of uh, Azerbaijan. And uh, in 1991, we know that we achieved, the, that we restored we regained the independence of uh, Azerbaijan. And at that time, Azerbaijan was in the verge of uh, civil war and loss of independence. Uh, and uh, as Colonel Khalid uh, and uh, as well as General Jafri mentioned, by the demand uh, of the nation, uh, national leader of Azerbaijan, Heydar Aliyev, returned to the power. And after his uh, returning to power, a political stability uh, achieved in Azerbaijan, uh, as well as the foundation laid for the economic uh, growth, for the economic independence of Azerbaijan. This all these things shows the leadership skills uh, on the theme of our this seminar is leadership uh, qualities in the crisis man uh, management. And that time was a uh, very deep crisis in Azerbaijan, uh, the verge uh, the of civil war, loss of independence. So the wisdom uh, of national leader Heydar Aliyev allowed uh, Azerbaijan to uh, go out, to, to rent out from this situation and to go to the uh, economy's uh, growth. And the main, also the second uh, crisis was war uh, on Nagorno-Karabakh conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan. You know, Azerbaijan, uh, the territories uh, at that time were occupied 25%. Uh, of Azerbaijan territories occupied by uh, Armenia, and, and there was a war uh, between Azerbaijan uh, and Armenia. And at that time, uh, the returning of Haydar Aliyev uh, to the power also uh, made, made a lot of uh, development uh, on this since uh, the international community uh, started to recognize the uh, occupied territories of Azerbaijan, the ceasefire uh, achieved uh, in the war. This was also the uh, very deep crisis uh, moment in the history of Azerbaijan, uh, which was uh, rescued that time by the national leader 
for the general year. And uh, uh, during his, the, his call from 1993 to 2003, the restoration and enrichment of uh, state to traditions of Azerbaijan also uh, began. And uh, uh, I think that because of his policy, because of his uh, wisdom and management, achieve a lot of uh, Azerbaijan, achieve a lot of things. Uh, therefore, uh, every year we uh, commemorate his uh, birth anniversary as well as uh, death anniversary. Uh, and uh, Azerbaijan nation uh, are grateful to him for his services made for independent as well as Azerbaijan uh, during the Soviet Union. After uh, uh, him also the uh, state policy, the policy pursued by the uh, national leader uh, was successfully continued by our current leader, uh, President Ilham Aliyev. And Azerbaijan now is among the dynamically developing countries uh, more than 25 years, I can say. And a lot of achievements uh, also were made during the current uh, leadership of, of Azerbaijan, uh, high performance in, uh, in the economy, very positive economic indicators uh, uh, in the country. And uh, if we will pay attention, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, not uh, external debt is at a very low level, 17% of uh, GDP. Inflation rate is uh, 2%. Uh, even Azerbaijan uh, is in the world bank list among 20 most uh, reforming countries of the world. But, so, these achievements uh, uh, alone, we have a uh, limited uh, time for the webinar, and I am sure that uh, our colleagues, our distinguished speakers, will share their opinions as well. I also would like to pay attention to uh, Azerbaijan-Pakistan uh, relationship. Uh, National leader Heydar Aliyev was also, uh, I would say, uh, the constitutor of uh, Azerbaijan-Pakistan uh, relations. After uh, coming to the power, Azerbaijan-Pakistan relations also started uh, strengthened very uh, steadily and uh, principal position of Azerbaijan on Kashmir issue uh, was put at that time by Heydar uh, Aliyev and at that time uh, Azerbaijan uh, defended the position of uh, Pakistan on Kashmir issue based on UN Security uh, Council resolutions. And uh, as well as Pakistan and uh, Azerbaijan started support each other in international uh, forums and in many uh, other international organizations. And in the, uh, uh, as well as in the, during the crisis time, uh, we were shoulder to shoulder uh, with Pakistan even during the uh, leadership of current uh, President Excellency Ilham uh, Ali. I, I would like uh, just uh, to, for example, in 2005, uh, during the devastating earthquake, Azerbaijan was one of the countries uh, which came uh, first to support uh, Pakistan after this devastating earthquake in Kashmir, as well as during the, uh, the um, flood in Sindh in 2011. And uh, in this uh, pandemic time as well, we are. Uh, we are supporting each other. Uh, fight against uh, COVID-19. And a lot of efforts and achievements uh, during this pandemic time were made by the leaders of uh, Pakistan and uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, if you will uh, glance to the measures taken by Azerbaijan government, uh, as president of Azerbaijan uh, said, uh, when this pandemic appeared, Azerbaijan reacted uh, 
to this new situation very quickly and uh, adequately, choosing the uh, protection of the people's life from the beginning of the COVID-19. Uh, a lot of measures were taken uh, in the country to, during this uh, crisis as well, and uh, not only in the country, in the global uh, arena by the initiative of the President of Azerbaijan and uh, I will also share the initiatives of Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan uh, by the initiative of President of Azerbaijan online summit uh, for Turkish speaking uh, council uh, leaders held uh, a few weeks ago as well as recently the non-aligned movement, online non-aligned movement summit uh, made by, uh, was uh, held by the initiative of the President of Azerbaijan. All uh, these efforts were focused for the strengthening of uh, solidarity, cooperation between uh, these countries in global arena and Azerbaijan also uh, contributed his uh, donation uh, in the Fire uh, COVID 19 to the World Parents Organization. 10 million uh, US dollars were donated to the World Parents Organization to combat uh, COVID 19. And uh, some other also uh, support uh, were, uh, uh, were given to our different friendly uh, countries uh, of Azerbaijan. Uh, measures taken a lot and for solidarity, for unity, for strengthening uh, cooperation in global arena. And I also would like to comment uh, the, the initiative of uh, PM uh, Imran Khan, Excellency Prime Minister Imran Khan. And uh, uh, I uh, remember he said the global pandemic cannot uh, be contained without strong coordinated and well-crafted uh, global response. And he uh, initiated the debt relief for developing uh, countries to combat this uh, coronavirus. Uh, I would like to mention that he thought not only about Pakistan, he also uh, thought about other developing uh, countries who are uh, combating this uh, result of this uh, pandemic. Uh, so, because of the uh, PM Imran Khan's efforts, Pakistan, I think, also was included in a uh, group of 72 countries eligible for uh, debt relief by G20 uh, countries. Uh, I, uh, uh, we see a lot of efforts, we see a lot of measures taken in Pakistan as well to combat this uh, coronavirus and uh, uh, I think uh, with the unity, with the solidarity, solidarity uh, inshallah, we will be able to prevent this uh, deadly virus. Uh, I uh, would like, you know, to conclude uh, my speech by the quotes of John Maxwell, uh, as said that the leader is who knows the way, who shows the way, who was the way, and uh, uh, we are uh, happy that we had uh, such great leaders uh, as national leader Haider Ali. I would also uh, to remind national leader of Pakistan, uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and our current leaders who are doing a lot of efforts to combat this uh, coronavirus, this crisis in their uh, countries. And, I will say that the real leader, the true country, is as alive a uh, Shahid who ready to sacrifice his life at any time for hmm? And the leader with leadership skills and experience and managerial qualities is always pillar of the country. I thank you all, especially. The CGSS, uh, I think uh, CGSS uh, kept the status of active think tank even uh, during this pandemic. 
uh, career, and uh, I think I must congratulate you, General Jaffrey, and uh, Colonel Khalid, and all your team uh, for your achievements as well, and all your efforts uh, to combat this coronavirus. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, also to thank for today's collaboration with the Embassy of Azerbaijan in organizing uh, this interesting webinar. Once again, thank you for, uh, thank you to our speakers, thank you to our participants and to all friends. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, uh, we are very glad that uh, uh, CGSS and uh, uh, Azerbaijan has got a lot of cooperation and uh, your speech was uh, uh, very motivational for all of us and uh, we would also like to thank you on your stance on the Kashmir issue. Uh, of course, uh, Pakistan stands with Azerbaijan on uh, Karabakh, Nikoro Karabakh issue and Azerbaijan has always stood with Pakistan on the Kashmir issue. Now I would like to introduce you uh, His Excellency Mr. Ahmed Yar Hiraj. Mr. Ahmed Yar Hiraj uh, uh, is currently uh, the chairman of the Prime Minister's uh, Inspection Committee. Uh, he also remained uh, uh, Minister of State in the past also, and he also remained uh, uh, the uh, District Mayor of District Khanewal uh, for a very long time. Uh, so, Mr. Ahmed Yar Hiraj. Thank you, Mr. Khaled. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. And uh, I'm thankful uh, to be given this opportunity to participate in this webinar. Uh, today is the uh, 93rd anniversary of Mr. Haider Aliyev, uh, the national leader of Azerbaijan, and uh, his, uh, his leadership skills. I'm sure they had a lot to contribute to bring Azerbaijan to where it is today. Like General Jafri was telling us earlier, that he had visited Azerbaijan and saw the progress taking place at that time. Uh, His Excellency the Ambassador has also uh, given a, a good update uh, about uh, the things happening. In the third world, uh, the role of leadership really uh, has a, a more dynamic task at hand as compared to many other developed countries and uh, the low role of leadership given the corona uh, virus epidemic right now is uh, being put to more test in, in all sorts of uh, societies the third world being what it is and and due to the lack of facilities uh, in, in countries like uh, like pakistan for example uh, there is a, a marked difference uh, in the approach and, and in how to uh, tackle a crisis. The tackling of a crisis by the leadership really begins with the understanding of the crisis itself, the identification of the issues raised and the situation as it evolves and as it grows from, from one uh, uh, aspect to another. So the role of leadership really starts by providing a vision uh, during a crisis uh, as how to manage it and how to uh, provide a solution to the to the to the country and to the society the solution would obviously come through capacities through capabilities through delivery systems but over the years if uh, over the past years the capacities have not been created the capabilities have not been achieved and the delivery systems have not been uh, put in place, then what would a leadership do in a given situation? Another uh, interesting aspect would be the management of expectations of the people. Uh, the people of a country, of, of a society, uh, when they are put to a crisis situation, they would expect certain things from uh, from the from the leadership so if the expectations rise too big if the expectations uh, uh, are much 
bigger than the capacity or the capability of the leadership or the management then then there will be a, a dissatisfaction being created at all times so the uh, most important thing for a leadership in a crisis situation is to explain themselves to communicate well with their people and to give them a, a whole picture and not to try and uh, put them into situations where they do not understand what is happening so communication is a very important tool here and once through the communication patient has been defined that this is what the leadership is going to do this is what we are going to achieve and this is the time span that we are going to follow in, in during so much uh, time we are going to reach this particular goal so once that is established the society uh, the people will have some confidence in the leadership and that is where the whole thing starts becoming manageable now creation of unity national consensus and confidence building within the people by the leadership is a very very important uh, situ uh, a very important tool to fight any crisis if the nation is divided if the if the people are not going in the same direction as the government is telling them to go to then there will be conflict and there will be rifts uh, between uh, the various parts of the society in every crisis there comes a an aspect of pessimism a, a depression in the society uh, for example uh, in the given scenario of covid 19 which is happening today people are losing businesses people are losing jobs and people are losing ways and means to earn their uh, livelihood so on the one hand the governments should come up like we have seen what is happening in pakistan under the pti government under the leadership of prime minister imran khan a huge and a massive uh, package is being given to the needy and it is being distributed through automated systems and uh, uh, businesses are being given tax breaks and defer of loans and things like that at the same time while this financial compensation is going on to eradicate depression and pessimism the leadership has to provide hope the leadership has to show some light at the end of the tunnel they have to be uh, communicating with the people and try and uh, sort of create a, an optimism that this is going to settle down and we are going to be back and uh, where it all started from so building hope is a very very important phenomena and uh, and, and that goes hand in hand with all these other solutions that are physically to be provided to the people if we look at the inverse side the role of leadership if it goes missing if if there is an absence of leadership then the people will start looking towards alternate options and this may create lawlessness and this may create chaos in the society so i would like to conclude by saying that it is actually in a crisis that the true capability of a leadership is put to test and when the leadership is tested in a crisis that is when they emerge to become the real role models or the saviors of a nation thank you uh, thank you very much excellency uh, for the valuable points uh, you raised uh, now i would like uh, to invite uh, his excellency uh, mr fuad muradov chairman uh, of state committee on work with diaspora of the republic of azerbaijan to deliver his speech uh, please excellency thank you very much dear ladies and gentlemen and excellencies uh, first of all on behalf of government i would like to thanks organizers for this 
event and I believe that uh, in this webinar we will find out the, um, the real direction for overcoming the crisis and at the same time underline the importance of the leader skills in the crisis situation. It's uh, 9 7th birthday of the Haider Ali, the nation leader of Azerbaijan. I would like to emphasize that uh, the beginning of the 90s was a very difficult time for Azerbaijan. And uh, by request of Azerbaijan nation, Haider Ali have come to power in 1993. And of course, the rapid reforms started in this time. Taking into account that situation in the region in general, and especially in Azerbaijan, was very difficult. From one part, we have the difficult internal situation. From other hand, we had the points of the occupation by Armenia of the Azerbaijan territory. In that difficult time, Haider Ali have come to power and start build step by step our government and our state, which we can now present in very high level. Of course, the, the leadership skills during crisis management uh, they rapidly show the uh, education level of person, uh, the uh, ability of the person to work in the crisis situation. And I would like to say thanks for our Pakistani colleagues uh, who always support Azerbaijan in all this time. And I believe that uh, this uh, cooperation, strategic cooperation, as was mentioned in the one of the last meeting of the high officials, will allow us to go to more deep for the uh, partnership in different fields. As you know, uh, Azerbaijan and Pakistan relations uh, start exactly in the same time when Haider Ali uh, come to power. And, and I would like to mention that uh, even the UN security resolution was adopted uh, when the Pakistan chaired the UN Security Council, which is very significant. Uh, which is a very significant document uh, for us, and we always uh, use this in um, the conflict resolution situation. At the same time, uh, the parallel uh, Haider Ali started the political reform, which was very important for Azerbaijan because you know the geographical situation of Azerbaijan, and uh, it's always we're always trying uh, to put the strategy uh, towards uh, building the good relation with the neighbors. With some of them. Uh, naming with Armenia is very difficult because they always try to uh, attack us in different fields and the last attacks was dealing with the uh, getting uh, our territory and of course uh, the strong position of the world community including the Pakistan uh, always appreciated by Azerbaijan nations. The political reforms uh, start in that time when the Azerbaijan uh, was in a very bad economic situation when the de decentralization was in a very high level. We have some separate groups in, the, in different regions of Azerbaijan. And uh, Haider Ali uh, genius uh, in that time showed us that it is possible to change the situation in Azerbaijan. Uh, and the economic reforms actually start when um, we signed the uh, oil contract, the uh, contract of the century, we call it. And I know that uh, from that time, Azerbaijani economy started rapidly develop and attract more investment uh, for uh, supporting the economy. Social reforms. Uh, as the previous excellent speaker uh, mentioned about that, the social reforms are one of the important uh, direction for any government, any state, and especially for Azerbaijan, is, it, was, it was very important because you know that during the Soviet Union time, Azerbaijan was the one of the Soviet Union countries who always uh, support uh, other uh, Soviet Union countries uh, and uh, that that's that issue was broken up when Soviet Union collapsed and the changing of the, the situation in the social uh, direction was one of the main target for Azerbaijan government in that time today uh, president Ilham Aliyev continued this reforms in Azerbaijan as you know, for the last years, we, have, we achieved uh, a very good results in all directions, in political reforms, in social reforms, in economy. Uh, using this opportunity, I would like to congratulate the government of Pakistan for in, uh, increasing the reforms in all, all fields. We, we saw for last year's uh, rapid reforms in uh, Pakistan and we uh, support official Islamabad for uh, deeply deepening these reforms. 
Haider Ali uh, 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 trying to uh, build uh, foreign affairs based on the interest of Azerbaijan and the base of the uh, current situation in the world. It was a very difficult time for Azerbaijan, but in spite of this fact, he succeeded to, uh, to, to find the agreement on the ceasefire. And in that time, it was very important for us because, as I mentioned before, uh, there was very difficult geographical and economic situation. Uh, as you know, the, the culture uh, relations is very important uh, for the countries like Azerbaijan and uh, Pakistan. As you know, we have the Urdu language studies in Azerbaijan and uh, being a chairman of the committee working with diaspora for me is very important that in Azerbaijan we have the language courses in the university when we support our friends and uh, students uh, from Pakistan. What we are doing as a, um, a government for this crisis time, overcome the uh, coronavirus? I would like to say that from the beginning, from the beginning of the uh, pandemic issue, Azerbaijan was prepared for that because in the beginning of the March, we start uh, uh, analyzing situation in the world. And as you know, we have the border with Iran and it was the place, one of the places when the uh, pandemic also uh, developed very fast uh, and from other point uh, the same situation we're now um, watching in the Russia that's why the first uh, one of the first step was to close the border but in spite of the uh, fact that we closed the border we uh, trying to uh, bring the, uh, the normal storage for the food security issue and I would like to say that from the beginning of this uh, crisis uh, the leadership of the President Ilham Aliyev show us that there are a lot of uh, important steps which other countries also can do. Uh, situation now uh, under the control of the Azerbaijani government, uh, as you know, we have uh, good cooperation with World Health Organization. At time to time, they visit uh, Azerbaijan and seeing the procedure we implementing for the for combating the coronavirus. And I believe that. Uh, uh, it's very important for all countries uh, to keep our watching on this situation because uh, the situation changed uh, very rapid. And um, I know that uh, the world leaders just recently in non-aligned movement has discussion about this uh, situation in the world and they decided to continue cooperation in this field, which is very important. Uh, we have very good cooperation uh, in organization for Islamic countries, as you know, the Pakistan-Azerbaijan has a uh, good cooperation in this direction and we are always trying uh, to pursue the world uh, continue living in the peace condition and I believe that these efforts uh, will uh, continue in this direction as well. Uh, for young generation, the uh, genius of Haider Ali also uh, important because uh, uh, even during Soviet Union time, uh, Haider Ali succeeded to come to very high level of the Soviet Union hierarchy. And it's, it's a good example for uh, any Azerbaijani that we had some high level ranking uh, person in Soviet Union hierarchy. And uh, even in that time, in Soviet Union time, uh, Azerbaijani nation always was proud of uh, his son, uh, that he represent Azerbaijan in uh, political, very political high level in Soviet Union. What uh, uh, kind of leadership skills uh, important to know for, for young generation? Of course, uh, the crisis show us that uh, it's uh, something uh, not only based on the education, but it's also based uh, of your ability to work in crisis situation, work in team, and uh, today, uh, the President Ilham Aliyev showed us uh, how it should implement and uh, all our agencies, state agencies and non-state agencies, trying now to uh, help uh, Azerbaijani here and not here also in the world. As a diaspora committee, we also uh, trying now to uh, help our uh, compatriots, Azerbaijani living abroad. As you know, in more than 50 countries, we have the Azerbaijani who living in these countries. Uh, uh, 
uh, for today, uh, we're trying to organize a special uh, uh, program for them, and uh, we succeed uh, together with other uh, state agencies. We succeed to uh, informing our people living abroad about the situation in Azerbaijan. We're trying to support them by uh, day by day, uh, improving day by day condition. And these efforts are, of course, uh, continue uh, because we believe that. Uh, support of Azerbaijani living abroad. Uh, it's one of the important mission of our committee and of our government. Uh, of course, the uh, role of the uh, Haider Ali was not only to uh, implement the reforms in Azerbaijan, but also uh, to uh, ensure that the uh, national building process will continue. And uh, today, it's a good example of Azerbaijan that this national building uh, strategy have a very good results. As you know, we have a very peaceful and prosperous situation in Azerbaijan now. And fortunately, uh, we have about 1 million IDPs and refugees. And you know, the, uh, there are a lot of uh, resolution uh, using this operation, I would like to Pakistani colleagues for uh, uh, adopted the Khojala massacre. And uh, there are resolution of the United Nations uh, Council of Europe and my, colle my, my colleagues will continue in this direction and inform you about that. But still, still the, we is, sometimes we feel that double or triple standards to this approach. Uh, one in one case, uh, there are completely different approach. I mean, it comes to the Azerbaijan. Uh, we saw that uh, still, still some of uh, member of the world community still not clearly understand the, the tactical situation and the um, application process of Azerbaijani territory. I believe that uh, this webinar uh, will help us again uh, to underline the importance of the leadership skills. I wish you all good in your life, and I believe that uh, by the strong leadership of Pakistani government, uh, you will overcome this pandemia, and Azerbaijan will always stand for, for Pakistan, as Pakistan did it for a long time, in time when Azerbaijan really need a, a strong support. Thank you very much again for organizers, and I will uh, continue to participate in this webinar. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, uh, I would just like to add here one thing that uh, in Pakistan, uh, we have uh, very closely started working with the Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan State Diaspora Committee. Even yesterday, we had a webinar with your Diaspora Committee and on 12th, we are having another webinar and hopefully we will be able to gather Pakistani diaspora and Azerbaijan diaspora world over together. Uh, now, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Niaz Ahmed Akhtar. Dr. Niaz is the Vice Chancellor of uh, University of Punjab in Lahore. Uh, so, for our audience in uh, Azerbaijan, I would like to introduce the Punjab University. Punjab University is one of the oldest university of the subcontinent and it is the biggest and oldest university of uh, Pakistan and it uh, has more than 47,000 students. And uh, uh, this university is currently headed by uh, the worthy Vice Chancellor, Dr. Niaz Ahmed. Over to you, Dr. Niaz in Lahore. Uh, thank you very much, Colonel Khalid. And I'm grateful to CDSS as well as to the Embassy of uh, uh, in Islamabad. Actually, this Azerbaijan ambassador and your organization, CDSS, made a very good effort and bringing all the speakers as well as colleagues from Azerbaijan and few of my colleagues from Punjab University, they are attending this team. I appreciate and acknowledge as well as congratulate both the teams, uh, Samir, Colonel Khaled and the team from Azerbaijan Embassy in Islamabad. And many thanks to the minister, uh, Dr. Fawad, he was speaking, and some Dr. Farid, and the, the, these people will be joining us after uh, my discussion. I was just thinking that uh, because of a very good speaker, 
like uh, I was listening to Ahmadiyya Hirat, His Excellency Ali, Ali Zada, and then to Fawad, and finally, I may be listening to Dr. Fried as well, and the Vice Chancellor from uh, Azerbaijan universities. Honestly, I was thinking, what is the common which I should, be, what is the commonality? When I was looking at uh, Ahmad Yar Hirad, I'm from his area, I'm from South Punjab. When I was looking to Fawad, and his, I was looking his interests, uh, his interest and my interest seems some common because his interest is also about the energy and environment as well as he speaks about the human rights. Dr. Free seems to be a law graduate and uh, I think uh, again my all the time when I speak in a different forum, I all the time speak that national and international laws principles should be followed. When I look into Ali Alizada, his uh, activities, what he is doing in the last couple of years, I was looking at his profile, how he is contributing, bringing the two countries together, Pakistan and Azerbaijan. It is really commendable what the people of Azerbaijan, the embassy of Azerbaijan is doing. And again, many thanks to CGSS, General Khalid and General Jaffrey, who have been making this a very brilliant effort to bringing these two brotherly and friendly countries together. This occasion, uh, I, I actually, as I was saying, my colleagues from Punjab University, they are also participating in this event. So a very brief introduction about Haider Ali. Haider Ali is the father of the nation of Azerbaijan. A very brief introduction. He made a huge contribution for this nation. That is why he is very rightly said, he is the father of the nation. He is the national leader. How the efforts he made, if you, if you look into the history of his profile, when he, he was struggling, when he is studying in Azerbaijan, he is graduating from one of the state industrial university, but he couldn't complete his graduation because he left because of the World War II. He left and I, uh, in a, after certain years, he graduated from USSR. As one of uh, my colleagues was mentioning, that I re he reached up to the level, the highest level. Yes, he made a lot of effort. He was the exceptional brain. He was not a normal person. He was the exceptional person. He made a lot of effort. Even from 19, 1969 to 80s, middle of 80s, again 17, 18 years, when he was looking after the Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan he was, he established in that period that he is the real leader of the Azerbaijan. He loved Azerbaijanis. He loved from his core of his heart. When he was in early 90s, he was taken as the president. He was invited to come and take over the charge of Azerbaijan. It was because of his credibility because in the heart, he lived in the heart of the Azerbaijanis. And it was because of the reason what he did for the Azerbaijanis in the last few years. He made efforts. Even in the last few years before joining this uh, uh, Azerbaijan as a president, he had some differences in the leadership of the USSR. Because of the reason, because he knew what is happening in Azerbaijan and the troops entered in the Azerbaijan, he asked USSR to ask to withdraw of these troops. But uh, finally he quit USSR, he left Moscow and came back to Baku. I think this a brief introduction of this great leader like Kadiyasa Muhammad Ali Jana, and from 1993 to 2003, he made a huge contribution for this nation. He gave the constitution of this Azerbaijan. He built the industrial units of this, this country, the great country. 
he trained the human resource in all the areas we can understand when a new country is going to be established that gets independent how much work it needs i think he can and he contributed in that way the, we are lucky the government of pakistan i think the government of pakistan was the second nation on the globe when they recognized azerbaijan as an independent state and thanks to azerbaijan people the love of hadarani he visited our country at the time of need at the time of need during the earthquake during the flood during the kashmir issue all the time azerbaijan has supported pakistan and we are grateful to them at the same time pakistan stands how much the area the armenian has occupied we have a very strong opinion that area must be given back to azerbaijan people because that belong to them by hook or by crook you cannot capture the area and it is the leadership now i will come to giving a brief uh, introduction of this great leader great leader he has established himself that he is the leader that the lead who is the leader they have some followers the whole of the country was the follower they invited him to come in this beautiful land 97 98% to muslim uh, religion in that azerbaijan they invited him he took over the charge he was committed he all the time day and night he is working for the development of this great nation azerbaijanis i think uh, we must salute him and the ilham the president ilham the way he is working it is the continuation of the policy of hadar ali i think uh, again that these two countries the, these two government the pti government iran and mr hiraj is there i, I think uh, the best way will be we can work together between these two countries azerbaijan and pakistan we have many common things we have the most common is that is from the design the creator who designed who created this universe who created us because of the commonality that we have the same religion it is from him allah subhanahu wa taala that we love each other that is why all the credit goes to my fellows who have arranged this seminar webinar uh, and on the day important day 97th anniversary of great leader hadar ali i think uh, now i'm going to combine this the qualities of this great leader exceptional leader exceptional brain and what the situation is now about the corona virus and again i will put few lines about the universities what is the role of the university what my university has been doing in the critical time in this challenging time in the time of crisis and what we people i say that in my humble uh, capacity what we have done for our society for our government and for our university i will put some likes on those points what we have done in this period i think uh, uh, having certain qualities leadership again leadership certain characteristics these are the prerequisite to be called as a leader i have given few points about the hadar that he has established his credibility he has showed his commitment to his work he has shown sincerity he has shown that technologically communication wise he was fully aware what is happening at the nation wise he was called at the time of crisis when the azerbaijan war azerbaijan was in crisis in early 19s even it was called in black january in 1990s but finally the, the country was got independence the soviet supreme authority declared that state as an independent state and finally it was declared in december through referendum yes it is an independent state so certain characteristics giving a real picture of a leader of azerbaijan how he pulled that 
nation from crisis to a a near to a developed nation how he developed his own nation from time of crisis the same this crisis no doubt it is a pandemic situation the pakistani government is doing at its level best all the leaders they all the time at the time of crisis how they can pull their nation their society from the crisis of course they are doing the best effort. if you look into the azerbaijan the the we are lucky the pakistan as well as the azerbaijan governments that it is not the same situation what is happening in usa what is happening in uh, europe it yes this virus exists in our country this virus is also in in uh, azerbaijan but the level the 28 30 deaths in azerbaijan hundreds deaths in uh, pakistan yes we can say in that situation where hundreds thousand people have expired in in uh, different countries and the developed countries but they are try trying their level best to the technology all that technology is available to them but it is the kind of allah subhanahu wa taala on both nations pakistan and azerbaijan azerbaijan that it has not escalated it is under the it is under control what we have done in punjab university because it may be helpful it may be helpful for the universities in azerbaijan we considered at a three level the universities higher education sector how we can play our role in uh, in this crisis in the corona covid 19 one was that how we can engage our people our school at the university level the punjab university students the faculty and faculty members and the employees you have very rightly introduced khalid that about 47000 students 100000 people daily flows in this university so my first priority was how i can maintain the law and order situation how i can uh, secure the safety and security of my students as well as to the faculty i immediately thought it was middle of march when it was decided it was going to be decided that it will be locked down at the national level so in 10 days my, i put five teams different teams to train themselves to have the online classes for my students because we were about to end the session for of my students we were near to complete the session my top priority was how i can save the one year of my students so i did that we were lucky we are lucky that we today we are able to complete the semester we are able to save the one year of our students that was about the students then about my faculty because near when it was going to lockdown i immediately decided it was 2021 that i think 23rd of march uh, 24th of march i decided immediately that salaries should be given to my staff so so that they should get the all the materials for their own so the money is at least that is made available to them they are teaching their classes so the first priority was to put my university on track then the my second one was the how yes when we thought that we have the stable situation in my university then we came forward to the to support the government what we did whatever the government instructions were coming we donated five sample 60 millions to government of pakistan and punjab government so that they should give this amount to the needy people who are unable to earn the money because of this lockdown and we immediately opened our university for the corona testing we uh, uh, prepared the corona kit and in a very cheaper price as well as we made available a certain three centers where the quarantine isolation centers where the people can be isolated so we open our university to the government of pakistan and the government of uh, punjab 
when after giving this much of support to the government of Pakistan, then we went to the society. Because of this 47,000 students who were living now, they left the university, but they were residing in their hometowns. We sent emails, letters, we communicated them. Yes, gentlemen, you are the qualified, you are well educated, you are living in your society, help the society. Whatever is the direction coming from the government of Pakistan, please pass on those directions to those our uh, society people, our uh, uh, members of the society. So they did that. Secondly, we asked social work department to collect the rations and distribute it into the society to the needy people. That work was done by the social work department. Then we asked our medical officers who were, who were available for our students and employees and staff. We asked them to come forward and join Punjab government in the telemedicine team. They joined there and they are the part of the Punjab government team. Then we had the psychology department. We asked the, because my colleague was my senior and my leader. Hirasa was saying about the depression because of course the people may go in that, that way. We asked our psychology department to, to launch mental health helpline as well as become the part of the Punjab government. We did that and our health uh, psychology department about seven PAGs, they are part of the Punjab government over there. Then again, we thought that the, what is the further way how we can contribute then uh, we asked the certain engineering, chemistry, pharmacy departments, environmental department to prepare the sanitizer. And we gave those sanitizers in tons to the public organizations so that the prices of the sanitizers remains um, um, in the right position in the market. So they, these people did that job. Then for the society, as well as for our students, for students we created online competition, online trainings, and we opened this training and workshops for all Pakistanis, even outside of Pakistan, anyone can join those training programs, IT courses, designing courses, calligraphy courses, any type of college of art and design, they open their college for online courses, online competitions, for all segments of the society. Then uh, Islamic Center, we have a very strong center, Islamic Center and Islamic Institute. We ask them what Islam says, please come on Punjab University and give direction to the society what Islam says during this Corona regime, Corona period, what is the point of view of the Islam, yeah, Islamic leader. So they did that. I think in that way, we have tried our level best how the, the tax money, money was coming to the Punjab University or to the higher education institution, to the public institution. It is the time to give this back to the nation, to contribute for the nation. And we have tried in our humble uh, capacity that in all the situation, we must contribute. Yes, one thing is this all support, but the achievements, we have made, I, I have certain things in my mind, by closing my discussion, I think all ah, this is achievable, achievable. You are the best leader. Yes, few leaders comes to get this title. They can become the title, they can become the leader. But real leaders are those to whom peoples follow. And today, Heather Lee is not with us, but we, follow him, the Azerbaijani peoples, they are following him. I remember it was a difficult time, I missed him because it's an outstanding contribution. On one side, he is a keeping good relation with Iran, Russia, Turkey. On the other side, he is keeping good relation with USA, with, with European Union. At the same time, I think it is again the quality of a great leader. So finally, Yes, a leader is uh, because the people who are main, uh, maximum people who are contributing, they belong, they are Muslims. 
um, I think Azerbaijan are from Pakistan, I can assume that mostly they are Muslim. Yes, when you, are, you have a good intention, when you have the sincerity for your nation, for your society, for your people, and you have the communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be sure the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you. You don't need to worry. And I have seen as a vice chancellor in the last 11 years, all the help, whenever I have requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that help was made available to them. I, this Umar, Umar, he was Khalifa. He was a, a normal person. He was no doubt a ruler. But before converting himself to the Islam, he was going to kill his sister because they were converted into Muslim. And Umar at that time was non-Muslim. But he converted himself into Muslim. He, he elevated himself because of his Iman, because of his love with Sayyidina Muhammad. Finally, at the time of Khalifa, when he was the king, when he was Khalifa, he was the ruler, he was thinking that was in his mind that yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sitting on the top and on the ground, I am second to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the creation has to follow Umar. Therefore, he was writing a letter to river. Yes, Umar as a Khalifa is writing to you, you have to obey this Khalifa. Then secondly, under a certain occasion, when there was an earthquake, and he put his stick on the ground, saying to the earth that, yes, this is Umar. He is not doing justice on you, on you and you are not allowed to, uh, to shake yourself. So the same situation during the Qutbah, sitting in Medina Mosque, he was giving orders to his commander that move your forces in that way, move your forces in the other way. The finally, when the, the commander got um, uh, captured or conquered some of their area and came back to Medina, the one of the Sahaba asked the commander that on the Friday prayer, Umar was given khutbah and during the middle of the khutbah, he tried to give the directions to you. You listen to that uh, direction? He said, yes, we thought perhaps Umar has reached over here and we listen to his voice. So these are certain good examples. Karyazam Muhammad Ali, Hader Ali, our um, prophets, our um, uh, Khalifa. <laughs> so, the, the lastly, it is to us how we follow them. The best examples of the leadership are in front of us. Thank you very much. I think I have taken a lot of time. Many thanks to Khalid and his team, the Embassy of Azerbaijan, my, His Excellency, my leader, Herad Saab, is sitting in front of me. They, you have listened to me. Thank you all. Thank you, God bless you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, uh, for the interesting speech. Uh, and now I would like to request uh, Dr. Farid Shafir, uh, Chairman, Center of Analysis of International Relations of Azerbaijan. Uh, yes. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm last speaker and probably due to the time constraints, uh, I will be quite brief. I would like to join other speakers in thanking our embassy and CGSS in organizing this very timely uh, seminar. Uh, you know, I would like to highlight quite briefly a few points uh, and uh, not to repeat what has been said before. Uh, uh, we have heard uh, a lot of comments about uh, Heydar Aliyev leadership. Um, you know, the, um, there are uh, several types of leadership, typology of leadership in, in the scholarly literature, uh, like crisis leadership, uh, that means the leadership uh, in time of crisis, and this is what we uh, discuss right now, crisis related to COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But also there are some other types, and uh, for example, trans, uh, transitional leader leader who takes uh, the country or people and going through 
very um, you know volatile time through through hardship and um, I think Haider Ali really combined several types of leadership, uh, crisis leadership, because in 1993, the country was at the brink of collapse. Uh, you know, again, I'm not going to speak about that because my previous speaker uh, already gave information. And, but then, uh, in our very difficult uh, 1990s, the first uh, decade of our independence, uh, decade of the uh, economic hardship, Armenian aggression, and then recovery, recovery and uh, signing the oil contracts with the uh, with Western companies, uh, developing uh, infrastructure, going through privatization. Basically, it was transition from common to uh, uh, the uh, the market economy. Um, and again, I in in this. Uh, 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 context, I would like also to thank uh, the general, the, the people of Pakistan government uh, for the support uh, uh, at that time uh, to Azerbaijan on many issues, including Nagorno-Karabakh. Indeed, we, we have uh, reciprocal interests, uh, uh, the, the bonds, uh, cultural, religious, but also political because of the situation, Nagorno-Karabakh, Kashmir and some others. Um, so the, now we're speaking about the pandemic. Uh, indeed, we also need both crisis leadership and transitional leadership. Crisis to cope with, with the pandemic. Again, I'm not going to repeat uh, the, the previous uh, uh, the speakers, uh, the ambassador and chairman of the diaspora committee. They, they mentioned what Azerbaijan doing in terms of the, uh, to cope with the crisis, uh, but also the, after that, we will need transitional uh, leadership uh, to uh, go through, uh, unfortunately, the all countries will face some economic hardship. And globally, globally, we see uh, the, the, you know, the different calls. Uh, and I just would like to remind a few days ago, the, the president of Azerbaijan chaired the non-alignment movement virtual summit and there was several important messages, messages of solidarity, messages of importance of multilateralism. Yes, it's true, uh, there is some criticism of uh, international organization, World Health Organizations and some other. That, of course, I think up to the experts to decide what was done right or wrong, probably will come to some conclusion. But in time of crisis, we need to support, in times of the transition, we need to support multilateralism uh, because um, otherwise we will face with the danger of unilateral actions and uh, you know we have to avoid uh, the, the, the worst coming from you know pandemic and the economic crisis which uh, probably will, will strike anyway. So, uh, but so far I, I'm a bit optimistic. I see a bit unity, I see solidarity between uh, member states. Um, and I think uh, uh, despite all these predictions that the global order will change significantly, I, I don't think so, but uh, what uh, sh should we all do uh, prevent, uh, I mean, it's up to countries like us, Azerbaijan and Pakistan and some other members, is to avoid uh, more confrontations, more conflicts, and this is uh, only through cooperation and through uh, unity. Uh, that was the the main messages of uh, the, the virtual summit uh, led by the president of Azerbaijan. So basically, I, I will limit my comments uh, to uh, um, to these important messages: how we have to cope with uh, COVID-19 pandemics, and probably it's the echo also of our experience experience of Azerbaijan. Uh, uh, in 1993 and you know all these years in, in 90s when Haydar Ali was in power and we went through a very very difficult period. Thank you very much. Now uh, we have a special speaker from Bishkek with us. Uh, we will go to Kyrgyz Republic 
and in Kyrgyz Republic, uh, uh, we have uh, Ms. Tana uh, Adrikol. Uh, she is a professor in the Kyrgyz State University in Bishkek. Uh, since uh, she's online with us and uh, she's with the translator and uh, uh, the, uh, there will be somebody in uh, Bishkek who will be reading the, her speech out in uh, uh, English. Uh, so, uh, can you hear us? Thank you very much, Mr. Taymour. Yes, Ms. Kana is online. Yes, Ms. Kana, you can go ahead. Uh, His Excellency Major General Said uh, Khalid Amir Zafari, His Excellency Ambassador and participants of the webinar, let me welcome you. <coughs> Good day. Khan Aydar Khut, Kyrgyzstan, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor at State University, Kyrgyzstan. And, uh, dear participants of the webinar, let me welcome you and thank the organizers for their work. Let me sincerely congratulate the representatives of Azerbaijan on the birthday of the national leader, His Excellency Heda Ali. The prosperous Azerbaijan which is highly highly respected and in the world political ar arena emerged and became a strong and independent state largely thanks to the genius of the great politician Heda Ali. And I want to show you uh, a presentation and let let me demonstrate this on the screen. Just a moment. Sure. And uh, the role of Hadalif in the development of relationship between Kyrgyzstan and Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. and, um, and today, as we know, the entire Azerbaijani people continue to follow his advice increasing the wealth and glory of Azerbaijan. We wish the fraternal Azerbaijani, Azerbaijani people peace, prosperity, and happiness. Indeed, relations between Azerbaijan and Kyrgyzstan have an ancient history. Azerbaijans and Kyrgyz have same roots, cultures, ancient uh, historical ties and traditions. All people are connected by language and religion. By the early 30s, hundreds of thousands of Azerbaijans were resettled in other republics, including Kyrgyzstan. And also, there were many problems. Our people shared bread and salt, which is Azbe. Currently, about 25,000 Azerbaijans live in Kyrgyzstan. They are full-fledged full uh, citizens of Kyrgyzstan and contribute to its development. Since olden times, between our countries have economic and cultural ties, and they are developing today. However, in the first years of independence, relations uh, created a situation all the time. The situation changed with the coming to the youth leadership qualities, he strongly changed the approach to conduct. <laughs> Can you please speak loud? We can't hear you. Can you please speak loud? Okay, okay. And that he strongly changed the approach to conducting international affairs. And, and uh, thus he laid a new stage for the foundation of friendship and fraternity between Azerbaijan and Kyrgyzstan. After independence, the two countries got a wide scope for the development of long standing close economic, scientific, and cultural ties. Diplomatic relations between our countries between our countries were established on January 19 
Yeah, the first list of Azerbaijani president Haider Ali to Kyrgyzstan took place. In August, in August 1995, he arrived in Kyrgyzstan as part of the third summit of heads of Turkish speaking states. The effects of mutual visits between the leaders of our countries continues. Dozens of agreements have been in science in various fields, including the Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation between the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Kyrgyz. This approach has also allowed Kyrgyzstan to contribute to peace in Karabakh was stopped in 1994 after the signing of the call in the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Seven years Seven years after it was signed at a meeting of nearly Majlis, it's the parliament of uh, Azerbaijan, then the repeat again. The May ceasefire was a very important step and we took it deliberately. Also, the problem was uh, has not been resolved. A truth is necessary. Unfortunately, many people have forgotten what was what war is. They live in peace and comfort. Unfortunately, they forgot about the war. And uh, during the, his fruitful activity, Haider Alif has made a great contribution uh, to the expansion of relations, to the expansion of horizons of cooperating between the countries based on mutual interests. It should be noted that the great role in the restoration of the Silk Road Connecting Europe with Asia is played by the TRACIS program, Transport Cardio Europe Caucasus Asia, which includes a number of technical projects. Participation in this project will also enable Kyrgyzstan to modernize uh, the Bishkek Naran Torugard Highway, which will provide the Trans Caucasus states, which access Kyrgyzstan and further to the states. to the states of Southeast Asia. Fruitful and all-around relations between Azerbaijan and Kyrgyzstan and Kyrgyzstan are on the rise in all directions. And Haider Ali made a contribution to this in his time. And uh, thank you for your attention. It is the end of our speech. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we are very much delighted uh, that uh, uh, you joined us from uh, Kyrgyz Republic, uh, and uh, we would like to welcome uh, Madam, and we would like that uh, she should uh, stay with us for the question answer session also. And uh, now we have some small comments. We will uh, uh, first go to uh, Peshawar. In Peshawar, we have the head of the International Relations Department, uh, Dr. Minhas Majid. Uh, she is the head of the International Relations Department in the University of Peshawar. Uh, Dr. Minhas, uh, you can give your comments, but kindly I would request all those people giving comments to keep them short. Uh, thank you very much, Khalid Saab. Um, uh, I'm grateful uh, to CGSS and the Embassy of uh, Azerbaijan to, uh, to have given me this opportunity uh, uh, to talk to, to listen to um, uh, all of you and to share my thoughts on uh, uh, leadership skills uh, during crisis management. Um, I would say that hearing all of you speaking uh, about uh, um, the national uh, leader of uh, Azerbaijan and his ears in power, uh, the people of Azerbaijan uh, and the rest of the world, um, I am sure everybody would agree with me that they saw strengthening of the national spirit and <clears throat> sorry, national statehood idea that came from a leader who had qualities, uh, who had the skill uh, to uh, uh, have uh, good communication skills, uh, adaptability, uh, self-control, uh, and uh, relationship management, as well as creativity. 
Now, I would not go into detail of all these uh, uh, skills of communication, but I would say that all these combined, uh, as a student uh, and teacher of international relations, uh, I call them as a relational diplomacy. A person knowing relational diplomacy can be a good leader and all these qualities I have found in the national hero of Azerbaijan. Uh, because uh, with good communication skill, uh, he can, he, uh, a leader uh, is able to convey his me message uh, to the other party or to the nation um, very clearly. Um, and he is also adept to all sorts of situation, uh, whether it is uh, um, uh, economic well-being time or whether it is a, a crisis time. Uh, similarly, he has control over, uh, he uh, seems to uh, have control over himself and he knew uh, how to manage uh, relations uh, as well as creativity. And that was why he was able to take uh, uh, his country out of uh, um, the crisis uh, where there was foreign intervention as well as internal uh, um, um, chaos uh, and that uh, helped uh, the country to go on uh, the road of economic stability and uh, have a foreign policy that was assertive as well as um, had flexibility as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Madam. Uh, we would now uh, invite uh, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Al Hassan. He's in Lahore. He's a geopolitical expert. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud uh, uh, had a speech which was for around five to seven minutes, but we would just request him to kindly keep it short. Uh, we'll go to Lahore to Dr. Mahmoud Al Hassan. Okay, thank you very much. I think you, you can all hear me. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, not to waste uh, my time on the uh, appreciation. Uh, Heather Aliyev uh, uh, is a, was a great leader and being the regional expert on Azerbaijan and uh, South Caucasus, uh, I would like to confess that all socio-economic and geopolitical achievements of uh, modern Azerbaijan are associated with the name of Heather Ali. Our crisis can be reputation uh, killers, brand killers, and uh, trust killers. But uh, uh, he tried his best to overcome uh, all the uh, complicated and complex uh, crises in the sphere of economics, uh, politics, uh, society, civility and uh, and, uh, and uh, foreign policy and we succeeded to overcome uh, through its uh, immaculate conception of foreign policy and uh, 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 crisis management for so many decades uh, he was the driving force behind uh, the country's political economic social and cultural development he was applied economist and genuine uh, political scientist uh, who uh, turned mysteries into opportunity and tears into uh, smiles. For him, politics uh, was the name of service, submission, and sensibility, which he used uh, for achieving the greater national prosperity, solidarity, consolidation, national dignity, and socio-economic prosperity. Uh, Heather Aliyev uh, was the first one to introduce and institutionalize the concepts of uh, good and corporate governance in South Caucasus and of course Central Asian countries, due to which uh, Azerbaijan achieved highest uh, standard of uh, qualitative life, education, uh, schooling and medications in the region. And in terms of corporate uh, governance, uh, the strong, stable, and sustainable banking and financial industries of Azerbaijan uh, are the resultant of his uh, structural uh, reforms uh, in these sectors. Uh, I uh, would like to precisely uh, 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 speak about the, uh, his uh, diversified uh, structural reforms in different sectors of uh, uh, administration, politics, and economics. <clears throat> he was the first one to introduce the concept of cross-route decentralization uh, in terms of administration, 
governance and uh, uh, and uh, implementation he was the first one to introduce uh, the municipality elections in south caucasus in 1999 and uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, crisis uh, of economics uh, uh, which he overcame uh, through the structural reforms uh, in terms of life liberalization uh, privatization and diversification <coughs> Uh, 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 some speakers uh, precisely speak about the uh, Balancing Act in foreign policy. Balancing Act, he introduced a very innovative uh, uh, Balancing Act uh, in foreign policy, which created uh, 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 necessary strategic cushion for the Azerbaijan to move forward in, uh, in, a, in a positive manner. He was the first one to institutionalize the Balancing Act in foreign policy uh, that uh, scored the national, social, economic, and geopolitical interests of the Azerbaijan, having uh, equilibrium, uh, bilateral, friendly ties between US and Russia, uh, between European Union and Muslim world, between Iran and Arab world, Middle East, and last but not the least, Turkey and Mediterranean region. Uh, in, in, in short, uh, one of the main uh, achievements in terms of balancing of act uh, in uh, foreign policy was the affiliation of Council of Europe uh, with uh, Azerbaijan. <coughs> uh, I, I just conclude uh, that I uh, uh, surprised that nobody from these uh, speakers spoke about the contract of the century. Uh, uh, contract of the century changed the geopolitical and socio-economic outlook of uh, Azerbaijan outrightly. Uh, he was, uh, was the first one to, to introduce the concept of energy and food security uh, in South Caucasus and uh, uh, signing of contract of century opened the gate for greater energy uh, regional connectivity uh, energy cooperation, uh, external. Uh, uh, sir, kindly, if you can finish it off now, uh, Dr. Mahmood, sir, if you can finish, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, to conclude, uh, that uh, uh, his immaculate conception of crisis management turned crises into opportunities, conflicts into national consensus, ethnic divide into national durability polarization into politicalization and democratization, deadlocks into diversity and loss, but we not least, destruction into sustainable economic development. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, again, we will go to Lahore for a comment uh, by uh, Dr. Sobia Khuram. Dr. Sobia Khuram is the Director General of the External Linkages. Uh, she heads the department in Punjab University which is responsible for the external linkages and international relations of the university with the other countries. Dr. Sobhya Khurram. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can hear me clearly. Right, all right. I know I am already short of time, so I'm, I'm going to keep my um, comments very brief. I'm um, very thankful for the opportunity and I um, um, had a lovely time listening to to all these interesting speeches on a very relevant topic today. Um, I'm particularly going to refer to the speech of the Vice Chancellor University of the Punjab in which um, he spoke in detail about the initiatives he has um, um, you know, um, taken at the university level. Uh, while I was preparing um, for this webinar today, I was just going through some um, leadership theories. I am from Institute of Administrative Sciences, so this is my area also. So um, I'm uh, very briefly going to point towards five main um, leadership behaviors or mindsets um, which are recommended during a time of crisis. The first one obviously um, is organizing a network of teams to um, and obviously that crisis can include um, any crisis including the COVID-19 pandemic um, we are facing today. So the first one would be organizing the network of teams that 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 would mean empowering um, uh, you know the, the the local decision makers to independently um, take actions and the leaders not trying to do to, to do it all. The second would be a very interesting one, um, combining both bounded optimism and uh, deliberate calm. Now by bounded optimism, I mean 
um, confidence combined with realism because it is a challenging situation. So it is imperative for a leader not to be overconfident in such a situation, but at the same time, um, having deliberate calm because the, the job of the leader obviously is uh, all the followers are looking up to him or her. So uh, de deliberate calm would be avoiding overreacting to uncertainty. The third one would be a very um, pertinent one because that includes flexible decision making. Decision makers not getting fixated onto their decisions. That would mean making a decision then to pause and think about what they've decided on, assess the situation, anticipate what's happening next, and in the end, act um, act again and maybe change their decision. So flexible decision making, not getting too fixated on the decisions they've made because it is an already evolving, changing situation and their decisions can change. Um, the fourth one would be demonstrating empathy. Um, Self-explanatory, they have to put themselves in their followers' shoes. The Vice Chancellor um, Sab has already mentioned that, um, you know, um, dispersing salaries on time and that obviously helped uh, people uh, with their stresses. And the last one would be very important one, communicating effectively. Now that would mean thoughtful, frequent communications by the leader to the whole organization. Um, and the last point would be maintaining transparency while communicating, which is uh, be clear. The leader has to be clear what they know. Uh, they also have to be clear what they don't know because it's an evolving situation. And the last one, obviously telling everybody uh, who, who's looking up to you uh, what you're doing to learn more. So, uh, so a very realistic leadership has to emerge in a time of crisis. I can go on, but I'm not sure how much time do I have. Um, can I speak more? Thank you very much. I think that would be all. all, right. all right. Thank, uh, thank you, you very thank much. You. Uh, since uh, we have almost uh, all the senior people online, and we would also like to use this opportunity uh, for uh, enhancement of uh, Pakistan and Azerbaijan relationship. So I would now uh, request Mr. Samir, the deputy head of the mission of the Azerbaijan embassy, to please uh, call for comments. Uh, from our Azerbaijani audience, which are who are here. Thank you very much, Khalid Saab. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Aydan uh, from the Minister of Finance of Azerbaijan uh, wanted to share uh, her thoughts because she visited a course in Pakistan and she would like to share with her, her experience. Ms. Aydan, if you hear me, please, uh, you can go on. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am... I am Aydan Vishetkize from Minister of Finance of Azerbaijan. Thank you for invitation uh, for this webinar. Sharing experience in Pakistan during the pandemic. Uh, in the March, um, I, I arrived to Pakistan to participate uh, to participate the uh, course, um, central banking course. Uh, which was organized by State Bank of Pakistan, the course that involved uh, participants uh, from 20 countries was very well organized in terms of management, in terms of facility and trainers. Uh, while being there, Pakistan surprised me uh, in uh, a lot, a lot in every sense, amazing nature, um, kind, smiling person, cultural and um, modernity, as well as a specialist uh, in various fields. I have been in many countries, but uh, a few of them um, I would like to travel again. Pakistan became one of them. I love Pakistan and uh, I saw that Pakistani people love Azerbaijanis. And uh, I also saw that Pakistan and Azerbaijan, the relationship between Azerbaijan and Pakistan is very strong. I think ambassador have an exceptional uh, role in this issue. And uh, thank you for everyone for invitation. Thank you. We will go to Peshawar. Uh, there we have Dr. Zamina Baloch. She wants to ask a question. Dr. Zamina Baloch. Um, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me in this webinar. Uh, it was very nice to see all the speakers. I will just make um, a common comment through my very little knowledge going through these uh, uh, pandemic and leadership skills and all this. 
the national leader had um, had the uh, we've been uh, hearing about the achievements and the leadership skills what i have to mention here is the strategy of three fundamental values he used to counter the um, problems uh, post independence like in we wanted to focus on independent state and uh, diversify uh, dynamic economy and free person which he achieved through different strategies and plans now during the pandemic uh, this leadership qualities were being inherited to the national leader ilham aliyev uh, i'll mention few steps which i have uh, gathered the leadership steps to counter the negativity a negative impact of these this pandemic covid 19 were um, macroeconomic stability he supported employment uh, entrepreneurship supported social protection of citizens um, like public jobs etc credit and uh, guarantee support and uh, this resulted in the biggest share of gdp to eliminate pandemic related economic problems uh, if we compare to other countries and the most interesting things which i came across was um, the uh, president ilham the uh, ilham himself contributing whole year salary to fund for fighting covid 19 which is highly appreciable and this shows a very high level of leadership qualities and i appreciate and we're looking forward more and more for uh, fighting these challenges and a very good example set by him thank you so much we will play that video and uh, okay. after that if nobody will have any comments then we will uh, request uh, uh, mr ahmed yar hiraj that on behalf of the government of pakistan and on behalf of cgss he would uh, close the session so first we will play the video and then we will ask for any more comments Haider Aliyev this genius personality has left indelible marks on the lives and fates of Azerbaijan and of every Azerbaijani everyone can characterize this personality in their own way but it is an undeniable fact that all these ideas are based on one reality Haider Aliyev was a personality politician who loved Azerbaijan devoted his whole life to his beloved country worked for it took his every step for his homeland and nation and whose heart was beating for the soil every second Haider Aliyev's attitude towards everyone to every work and decision was based on one aim love for people love for motherland service to the nation and state Azerbaijan Benim yüreğimdir. Azerbaycan benim nefesimdir. Azerbaycan benim hayatımdır. I would now uh, request uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed Yar Hiraj who is the uh, 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 chairman of the prime minister inspection committee and who is here on behalf of the government of pakistan to please uh, address the audience and uh, uh, from pakistan side and from our side thank the uh, chairman of uh, uh, diaspora committee so after mr ahmed yar hiraj will speak we will also request uh, the chairman of the diaspora committee uh, for his closing remarks so first mr ahmed yar hiraj Khalid, uh, I'm thankful for everybody to uh, those people who participated in this webinar. It was very informative, and uh, it, this gives great opportunity for interacting with our uh, uh, Azerbaijani uh, neighbors, and uh, uh, we hope to have a long-lasting relationship. 
uh, with a bilateral relationship between Pakistan and Azerbaijan. And we hope to have uh, uh, continuity of such interactive sessions in future. I would also like to thank the uh, Center for Strategic Studies in Islamabad, uh, who uh, hosted this uh, program. And I hope to have uh, more informative programs with their collaboration in future. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll go to Baku and uh, we would request uh, the chairman of the diaspora committee to give his uh, closing remarks, please. Thank you very much for uh, organizing this event. It was uh, very interesting. I thanks for all participants who patiently listen for us and uh, have no chance to speak. But I believe that such kind of uh, webinars will continue. The special thanks to our embassy in Islamabad and uh, to G uh, CGC for organizing this event. And I believe that uh, cooperation between two countries uh, will continue. And we have a, a very good basement for that. And I thanks to my colleague from Islamabad for kind words about Azerbaijan. And uh, on behalf of uh, government of Azerbaijan, I, success, I, I wish you success in all your uh, doing. And uh, we all believe that soon we'll come back to normal lifestyle. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now we will request... Uh, Question may uh, Mr. Rizadeh, the ambassador of Azerbaijan to Pakistan. Thank you so much, Paul Malfari. I also, from on behalf of the embassy of Azerbaijan, I would like to thank all our distinguished speakers from Azerbaijan, from Pakistan. Also, uh, the uh, Madame Professor who joined us from Kyrgyzstan. And I also notice Excellency Ambassador of Kyrgyzstan uh, in Pakistan, Mr. Eric Deshenbir was also with us today. I thank him and all uh, uh, distinguished speaker participant who was with us today, who uh, honored us uh, today. I uh, hope that inshallah, as Mr. Chairman rather mentioned, soon we will come back to uh, our normal life and we will prevent this deadly virus. Thank you so much to all. Thank you very much, sir. Now, at the end, I would like to request uh, uh, General Khaled Amir Jaffrey, who is the President for Center for Global and Strategic Studies, to please uh, conclude and say goodbye to everybody. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, once again, I must thank the, all the esteemed participants who took part in a very informative uh, webinar. And of course, inshallah, the CGSS will try and continue uh, with our tradition and uh, keep the uh, uh, issue, uh, keep on discussing issues with uh, Azerbaijan, which are of common interest. Azerbaijan being a very, very brotherly and friendly country. So once again, thank you very much for participating.